All right, hey guys, very quick, it's gonna be a very quick tutorial. Um, not a really a tutorial, but kind of like an explanation of all, all this stuff means. So this is right after you pick your name and all this stuff, right after you pick all your perks. You click next, and now it's time to determine the difficulty. And there's actually a lot more than just the difficulty, you know what I mean? So uh, let me explain what all of this means to you so you can kind of understand, okay? So obviously we have the presets. If you change this, it changes all the stuff with it. Let's just start with the easiest one. We got Freebooter, Warrior, and Bannerlord. Those are the three, and custom is whenever you just want to change it for yourself, right? So uh, to be honest with you, in terms of um, the received damage, both the player and the friendly troops receive damage, uh, the realistic option is usually what I would choose. It is a little bit unforgiving early game, I'll be honest with you, but it's a good way to play it. Um, I usually... Well, I guess for newer players, you could try it easy if you're really just trying to have an easy time with it. Very easy really does make you a bullet sponge and your friendly troops a bullet sponge. So if you want to be like a bullet sponge and pretty much play on the easiest you can, I would choose reduce to 50% and reduce to 25%. But usually if you want to just have a normal playthrough and kind of learn the ropes and kind of have a little bit more unforgiving start, I would choose the realistic. So let's just... uh. Choose realistic, why not? Now, recruitment difficulty. What does this mean? Uh, so this is what your uh, how much troops you can... Um, oh, it actually gives you a tooltip as well. But pretty much what this does is the amount of troops you're able to recruit uh, from villages and towns. Uh, there's slots uh, that you recruit troops on. And depending on your um, relationship with the specific person that's offering the troops, uh, more slots will open up. But... Um, if you choose the very easy, for example, two slots will be opened up for you right at the start without having to gain any reputation with that certain person who has the troops. Realistic just gives you, I think it's like the first two or three slots. I think it's the first two, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, let's do realistic. Uh, map movement speed. Again, um, I do, <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I like moving on the map fast. Uh, very easy it is tempting, it's very fun. Realistic is not bad at all. You just have to keep up with like how much... Um, how much stuff you're carrying in this, you know, because your speed varies on certain things, like how much troops you have, how much stuff you carry, how much amount of troops you have compared to infantry troops. A lot of stuff going on there, but um, yeah, realistic is the way I would go. But sometimes, you know, you, you can go with a little 5% if you're just your first time. It's not that big of a deal. So it's, it's a little advantage. Persuasion success. Boom, boom, boom. So uh, these bonuses, uh, this is just uh, whenever you talk to somebody and try to persuade them of something, uh you know, to join you, to marry you, all that type of stuff. Um, there's going to be pretty much, uh, you're going to have to pick, and it's like a percent chance that it succeeds, percent chance it doesn't succeed. And depending on the conversation you're having, there might be two of these, three of these, like where you have to just pick out of like a set of three uh, choices. And the choices is like chance of success, 60%, uh, chance of failure, 40%, and there's another option, chance of success, 40%, but if you succeed, you get like double the reward, and like there's stuff like that, right? But um, the persuasion success, um, the higher it is, the easier you'll, you'll be able to persuade people and therefore get them on your side or marry them or whatever that is. Uh, I'll just do realistic. Combat AI difficulty. Normal is very easy. It's very easy. I suggest going on veteran. I still play on veteran. Challenging is kind of crazy. I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes some of the, some AI is like disgusting and challenging. Like disgusting. Like a very, like the best um, archer, like the Britannian file on challenging. Oh my God. He, he's not going to miss you. It doesn't matter if you have four shields on. It's, he's not going to miss you. But veterans are a pretty good uh, spot. I would suggest probably normal if you are starting out though. Now, clan member death possibility in battles. Um, so, I like hidden realistic. I'm be honest with you. Um, you know, it pretty much makes it more realistic that sometimes your clan members can die, and it's like you know during battle, not just of old age. I think that's good. Uh, you can reduce to fifty percent, I guess, if you want to make it a little bit easier on yourself, but. I would go with realistic, even if it's your first uh, time. It's fun to actually have a world that's ever evolving. People, you know what I mean, come and go. It's 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 better in my opinion. Now, hero deaths in combat enable all for all heroes. That includes you, the player, you, the main character that you just built up right here. Every single time you're in a battle and you get knocked down, there's a chance that you're out. Now that right there 
Oh, that makes it so much better. That gives you the urgency to get married, the urgency to have a child just in case that you know your main hero, your main character. Uh, I said your main hero. I'm trying to say character and hero, but your main hero, you know, just dies, and that's it. And now, either your whole campaign's over because you don't have an heir, or you have an heir and you continue. It's it just makes the game so much more better. You know what I mean? It gives you that new challenge, that new like, okay, I gotta watch out. I can't do this because there's a percent chance that this happens. I think that's pretty good. So yeah, I would enable death for all heroes always. Yeah. And then um, this one right here, auto allocate clan member perks. I always turn it on because I'm lazy. What this means is you're gonna have clan members, you're gonna have companions. Whenever they level up, they're gonna choose their perks uh, for themselves. If you really wanna kind of min max it, you wanna have like a lot of companions in your party and just be, you know, just very, if you wanna really min max it, uh, you know, just like, for example, like the bonuses, like for example, a clan member might be very skilled in tactics and he might be in your party and he might be like, has like very good tactics skill that very much improve uh, his formation and also your whole clan party in terms of how good you, you guys fight, right? So therefore, if you're going for that type of min-max playthrough, then you want to take this off. But if you put it on, they're going to, you know, pretty much pick their own perks. And also for the... Um, since I pick death for all heroes, your companions die a lot. You know what I mean? I'm just going to let you know right now. Your companions die a lot when you pick this. And uh, I don't really feel like min-maxing all that just for you know my companion to just die the second battle he's in, which happens a lot. So, yeah. Just keep that in mind. Usually, if you, if you want to make the choices and make it very much like a kind of like a a multiple like a rpg with like different like characters i would suggest you then disable battle deaths for all heroes so you can actually like experience all those bonuses and all that min maxing that you're doing but yeah i usually just let them do their thing now iron man mode as it implies it's in a lot of different games uh pretty much what's it called you can't really uh save and come back save and come back like uh what's, what's the word safe like save is it save scum or save whatever it's called like i still do it i am be honest with you. i still do it like especially if i'm just gonna do a uh like a speech check and it fails i'm gonna go to a different save and all that you know what i mean but this pretty much keeps it on a single save and um it automatically saves so you can't really uh you know what i mean you can't really make choices. If they don't go well, you go back to a previous save. You have to just play as you play, which is cool, which is fun. Uh, do I usually always choose it? No, I'll be honest with you. But if I'm doing like a playthrough, I'll probably choose it because it's like, you know, that makes it more realistic, more, you know what I mean? Like on the fly and your choices really matter. Yeah, so we'll put it on there and that's pretty much it. And then you start the game. There you go. Hopefully that was informative and I'll see you in the next one.